big shout to Arlo Parks inside the house. How are you doing, guys? I'm okay. How are you doing, brother? You know what? I'm doing I'm doing good. Where are you at the moment, though? Whereabouts are you in the world? So I am in East London um, at my label office. And yeah, I'm feeling good. It's been quite a busy day, but I'm feeling content. The album's done, which is exciting. So feeling good. Yeah, you're, you're, you're building up as you means to go on. I'm loving I'm loving the trajectory right now. <laughs> it's, it's sick. Like, um, her, that's been well received, the new single, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's out there, right? It's in orbit. Mm -hmm. It's in orbit, 100%. Yeah, that's been exciting. It's been weird to put out music during this time, but I'm glad that it's connecting with people. Yeah, I'm feeling that. It's a funny time to be doing anything. Yeah, like that, definitely. definitely yeah. I mean, let's let's get into the background of this one because while we're on the subject, we might as well go into the nitty gritty. What is the day in the life of Arlo Parks during lockdown? Give us the give us the four one one on this. Oh, okay. This is an interesting one. So there was um, some meditation going on. There was a lot of picking Mexican food, a lot of writing poems. A lot of going for runs. I feel like it was very much about keeping myself busy um, because I'm someone who has a lot of energy. So I think being productive in terms of music and also just keeping my mind um, intact. Yeah. Some self, self uh, refinement, some time to oneself so that one don't go thinking too deep on everything. Mm. It might be a simple thing of solutions. Mm, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Do you have a studio set up at your home? Yeah, I do, I do. I've got, um, I've got loads of guitars, I've got a mic, a little interface. MIDI, some synths, uh, just like in the corner of my room. It's not really a studio, but I've been making a lot of tunes. Oh there. man, what is a studio these days? Define it. It's, 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 it's the smaller, the quicker, the better. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. What's your batting average? So if you've got the, if you've got a studio set up in a, in a convenient space that is easily uh, grabbable, what's your batting average of how many tunes you record to how many you deem as a success to go on a record? Ooh, I would say probably for every tune I put out I've probably written about seven seven yeah probably seven Yo, that's good yeah that's good chicks. that is what's that that's one in seven you're like yeah this is the one yeah this is, this is gonna work mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. What do you look? What do you look for in that? What do you look for in a particular? In that one in seven, what's the zeitgeist? guys? What's the bit you look for? I feel like it's. I can't really describe it, but it's definitely a feeling. Like I get to the end of having created it, and I have this sense of like having made something that might connect or might be important. I feel like it's very much a gut thing. Yeah. This is really hard to define the gut thing as whether it translates into like the hottest record in the world mm. right now. Mm. <laughs> right? Yeah, but it's all you can really trust. I feel like you never know how people are going to receive anything. But if you feel good about it in yourself, then that's, that's enough. Yeah. And I guess that also comes with the freedom of knowing that you can you can put out what you want. Mm. You know, there, there was obviously times in the music industry when it definitely wasn't the case. And you got a label that's supporting you, etc, etc. Right? Mm, definitely. I mean, I've got... I feel I'm I'm with a label, but I feel like because I'm with an independent label who has who has artists across so many different genres, I've really mm. been given the space to just like fulfil my own creative vision and just experiment and um and I'm really grateful for that actually. Just being allowed to grow mm. um organically. What, what define I don't know, not in too many words, because obviously, you know, you could write you could write a thesis about this shit. But like how Define your creative vision. What is your, what is, you, you know, the thing that is in your stomach when you feel something, it's like, yeah, I'm in that. What's, what's the ingredients? What's the inspirations? What's the components, hmm. you know, for you? I think for me, it's about, I think, I think it's about, for me, I'm inspired a lot by, by people and by emotion. And I feel like when, I have a sense that I've encapsulated a situation or a conversation or an emotion um, in a way that feels true. That's re that's when I feel like I've done something right. Um, and I'm also very much inspired by poetry. So I think when I'm proud of my choice of words um, or I feel like I can really visualize, like somebody who hasn't lived it could really visualize what I'm talking about. That's also a component. For real. It's got to scan right on the paper. Right? Mm. It's got to be right. Mm. That's one thing about poetry. You know when people get into theatre first and then go on to cinema? Mm. I feel that way with poetry and songwriting. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Definitely. They're really intertwined, especially, you know, listening. I grew up listening to a lot of like MF Doom and Diggable Planets and, and hip hop. And I feel like that is one of the 
the things about hip hop that I love it is like a, a, a mix of, of poetry and, and music. It's just so perfectly married. Oh, hell yeah. Now you're talking my language, mm. you see. <laughs> you know, the hip hop genre, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like an, to, to the untrained ear of hip hop, it's like you open up that box called hip hop and you could be like, it's almost like a tumbling roll of nothing but content hitting your head mm. and you don't know where to begin. But if, if you really know the gems, you know, like your tribe called Quest, mm. for instance, this is this is you know the lyricism in that it's so understated guru from gangstar so mm. well played do you know what i mean mm. play on words and voice you know i agree it's all very it's all very considered i feel like even if though it feels like sometimes it's an avalanche of words the stories and when you get into the nitty-gritty of the rhyme schemes and stuff it's so so impressive because everything is considered oh man in rhymes in rhymes upon in rhymes i do love it when you know your own mind wanders pharamonch is a great example of that actually mm. <sighs> you know super cold um i love i love that and you you obviously when you're going into this zone of like finding what temperature feels right per per verse or bar and whatnot you're definitely taking in influences from your outside have there only been any influences from the outside you know that you've taken in and you thought to yourself yeah i think i'm getting too tight i'm getting too close to the subject matter now hmm do you mean in terms of like what i'm talking about like i feel like i'm getting too yeah. close to the no i feel like the way that i write is very much it's very quick and it's very kind of based off of instinct like i never really think oh i'm getting too close to the bone here i feel like when i when i have that sense of like oh i'm getting vulnerable or all oh, i feel quite exposed i feel like i'm really getting on to something important because the most the art that really touches you is the art that feels completely honest and i think if you overthink yeah. it then you dilute the magic yeah that's right that's right and you've got to you've also to do you've got to cut out the noise a little mm. bit and you just go with what's true definitely well noise you're definitely making <laughs> and uh you must because you know you, you're you're being you're, you're very spoke you're almost like a spokeslady you know you're a spokesperson <laughs> for for the new generation of independent artists and you know again proving that there are no bounds there are no genres mm. we're breaking this thing mm. you know do you know what i'm saying like how much of that is in consideration when you're uh, for instance even us talking do you know what i mean like mm. there must be a, a, some some level of pressure on your shoulders and, and rightfully so you know when when you get heralded in that nature mm. do you ever think just a fresh i hope that music's really good <laughs> <I hope> that <laughs> music's doing that i hope it's doing <laughs> yeah i mean i guess you know i think for me i I like the fact that my music is seen as something that's opening conversations or seen as, as something that you can't necessarily put in a box. I think, you know, when I think about the music that inspires me, it's everyone from like Joy Orbison to Tribe to Nina Simone to DJ Shadow. Like it's kind of, I'm picking from a lot of different places and kind of almost creating a fusion of, of all of those different elements to make something unique. Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't like to think that I'm actually speaking on anyone's behalf. I'm kind of speaking my truth, but the fact that people connect to it on a, on a wider scale is a beautiful thing. So, nothing more liberating, right? Mm. That's it, you're more free than that. Mm. Um, and you threw out some more inspiration there that, that it's begging me to ask, like, do you have any brothers or sisters? Was there, was there an upbringing where you were just like totally exposed to these levels of quality? No, not really. I mean, my parents, did, I've got a little brother, but my parents listened to music, but it was very much, you know, there wasn't that kind of burning desire to discover m new music. And I wasn't listening to a lot of different stuff. I think that just came from within. Like I grew up with YouTube, so I would just kind of sit up for hours just finding new music it just i don't really know where it came from but i always just had that desire to consume new things man when dj shadow dropped introducing my whole oh my, my god it's, oh, oh, god, yeah. Man. Oh. yeah like changeling is like literally i i was just thinking about yeah that that is a very very special special album oh my god. like you can put it in any zone mm. Like if, if you're if you're walking really fast in the dark and the lights are passing you a little bit quicker, you feel like you're in the zone with that album. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. It's just one of, yeah. it's just mad. It's mad. It's yeah, just mad. Um, what do you do for your spare time? What do you, what goes on? What goes on with you? I mean, you know, it depends. In lockdown mode, um, not 
not that much really i mean in general i spend a lot of time with with my friends um i like just kind of going to a pub or like having dinner and stuff i feel like recently i've been super super busy so i haven't had that mm. much time off but i like to yeah i like to spend time with my people i like to read and um, watch movies spend time with like my family and stuff but, uh, mm. wholesome existence yeah 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 favorite um favorite drink in the pub Ooh. Interest. I like I'm red wine because my mum's French, so I was, wine is very much part of the the culture there. So yeah, red wine. Do you like is there varieties of red wine that you dig? Yeah, I think I'd go for like a Merlot or something. I don't really know that much about wine. I just know which ones I like and which ones I don't. And then, <laughs> so I'm wouldn't... yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a, it wasn't a trick question. <laughs> I I drink to get drunk, so you know just you know as long as it doesn't taste like you know, bad water, then I'm good. And um, yeah. Uh, do you prefer uh, pubs with bar with um, with live venue, or do you prefer, prefer cocktail bars that were kind of a bit more diving? Ooh. I feel like it depends on my mood. I do like the divey bars, but at the same time, having like some kind of live music always makes the evening better, in my opinion. I really enjoy just like popping into a pub or or. Or a situation where you don't necessarily know the artist and you discover someone really special. I feel like that I had that the moment that the moment I was introduced to you, and I really appreciate you joining us on the Killer Killer podcast, time. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me. Smashing it. So when uh, when all this COVID lockdown business is over, I'd love to have you on the show. Yeah. Of course. Drinking a, drinking a red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my dear. Have a good one. Big shout out to yourself, Arlo Parks, inside the place. Hey, thank you so much.